Hey, welcome uh, everybody. So uh, today is a lot of information uh, coming to us. It's really, really great. So my name is uh, Ronald uh, van Kleunen. I'm running uh, Globron based in uh, Asia. Uh, I fly a lot in uh, Asia, so all those disaster zones you saw in the previous presentation, I'm not sure if I'm the cause or the root cause for it <laughs> when I fly to all those uh, different areas. So it's a uh, risky, risky area. And if there is no disaster, then there is maybe political unrest. Um, what we're going to talk about today is about um, Gen W, Generation Wireless, but also Wireless Asia's future. And we're looking into the vision, the challenges, and where we're going in Asia Pack with the wireless network technologies. So once we talk about the vision, then I don't mean the television, right? Looking, for, looking very far in the future. So the vision. Um, Recently, the ITU had a um, presentation in Bangkok, and it was all about from how are we going to enable uh, people in non-served areas. So you saw that actually in the presentation as well for the disasters, but there are still many, many people not connected. 4.4 billion people are not connected in many remote areas, right? Um, but also you see as a trend, so if you go to the black area, is uh, many people in Asia, they only use mobile devices because they live on the streets or they, they, they're not at home all the time, right? So there's a very mobile uh, community and it grows exponentially. So you see that a lot of violence is growing very, very rapidly. Now in the red block, you see the social network. So that is the TGIF, the, the Twitter, the, the, the Facebooks and all those type of applications, which is growing, growing rapidly. And those applications are actually driving um, uh, all this mobile mobile business, right? And that, uh, that links actually to your network connectivity. How do you enable all those people wirelessly? It connects also to your data center business. I'm not sure if you're aware of that, but in Bangkok, there are around 12 million Facebook users. It's one of the largest cities worldwide which is enabled for Facebook. But there is no data center for Facebook. Okay, we have Facebook data centers in the US. We have Facebook data center in, in Europe. But there's no Facebook data center in Asia yet. So that is coming. So for the investors, the, the data center investors, Google recently set up in Singapore and in Taiwan, where do we host all those data, right? So you, you're communicating with your social networks, but the data is not in your own country. So that's something to think about from a security perspective. And I think one fourth of the world's population lives actually in, in APEC. So it's all those people, they want to communicate, uh, communicate as well. So what are the challenges? Access. So I think you hear it in the disaster recovery presentation already, but if you look like a country like Myanmar, only 9% of the people has a telephone, right? And it's a population of 54 million people, and they all want to be connected, right? And I think it's our goal as, as, as wireless professionals to see how can we enable all those people as fast as possible using wireless technology. That's the fastest way to enable all those people. Okay, so you see that picture, like an uh, older lady sitting in the peri fields. That lady maybe needs to be connected uh, as well. Now, talking about access, how many of you earn more than two US dollars per month? I think everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, you do? Okay, I'm <laughs> glad that you said it, Gene. Now, the, the thing is, in China, there's a report from the United Nations, there is a huge percentage of people who only earn that amount of money. So if you talk to Dr. Touré, who is leading the ITU, the International Telecommunication Union, how are we going to enable those people? All those people need to be connected, four or four billion people, but they don't have the money. So I see in some other countries, like Bangladesh, that they're doing investments, they're creating their own tablets, they're doing their own investments, they're creating their own access points for a very, very low cost, to enable all those people and to get access to the network. Right, so I'm scratching my head. I don't have the answer for it from how do we enable all those people, right? Especially the poorer uh, community. The second black block is interference. I see that as a big issue, but I actually learned from Gene that interference is actually not, not a problem, but I think it's a problem. So there's big cities in Asia with 60 million people like Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou, uh, Bangkok, and so on, Philippines, Manila, that are all apartment blocks. And if I look to my own apartment block, because I'm staying in Singapore and in Bangkok most of the time, but my apartment block, I have now 15 Wi-Fi devices in one household. 
and my neighbor, and my other neighbor, and my other neighbor. So we have one block of 70, 27 floors, which is one big Wi-Fi zone, right? And then the next apartment block, and the hotel next door, and so on, and so on. So you can imagine that this large city is becoming a big Wi-Fi stadium. And we talked about density, and uh, there are a lot of talks about density, but actually a city is a moving stadium, right? We don't have fixed access and people are installing Wi-Fi all the time. So how are we going to fix that? Because it's a moving Wi-Fi zone continuously. So interference is, is I think, a big issue. Um, and, and we see that also in the installations, people are deploying in cities like 600,000 access points and deploy and deploy and enable all those, those, those Wi-Fi connectivity. Then security is an important thing. I heard when I talked to some people, well, security is a little bit dead in the US. Not sure after Edward Snowden if security is still dead in the US, but in Asia it's not dead. Okay, security is a big, big topic, especially when you have to deal with all those kind of spying uh, organizations. Now, in 2008, I spoke on the ITU as well on the cybersecurity panel because I, my, my, my background is actually security. And on the, on the cybersecurity panel, there were a lot of things addressed, like um, uh, where, the, where is your data stored, right, in your data center? Um, if one government does an attack to another government, who is accountable, how do we monitor, and how do we resp uh, respond to that? Then I actually realized, because after I went to a presentation of the, the prime ministers, because they are part of this ITU organization, and they started to talk, yeah, security is actually not so important because it comes back to access. So access is always number one, not security. But you need to design with security in the back of your mind, otherwise it can have an additional investment for your whole wireless LAN infrastructure. Now the other item is safety, health risk. Um, I'm not a specialist, I'm not medically educated, right? But I'm watching some uh, videos on YouTube where people get headaches. And I, we are actually the CWMP training center in APEC. And we do a lot of training, but when we have all those access points in that classroom, people get headaches in the classroom, right? So I'm not sure how that's going to work. And I don't know if there are specialists here in the room who can st stand up. Yeah, 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 you saw that, right? Like aluminum foil, <laughs> put it over your head to, to, that people don't suck out that information wirelessly from your, from your brain. Well, I don't know if the answer for it, but I can see that there's a big concern as well, because we have all those Wi-Fi waves, Bluetooth, telecom towers, Wi-Fi, all coming together, and there are all kind of waves going through all those households. So that's something we maybe need to, to look into that from a, from a wireless perspective to the community. So Gen W. Um, I think what is needed is also governance uh, with all the different governments um, in all those regions because telcos, they're just deploying, we have access points sitting next to each other, telco A and telco B, because we have redundancy. Uh, from a design perspective, that is, that is not good, right? So we need to have better governance, we need to have better standardization. How are we going to deploy all those different networks? Um, and standardization is actually different for all the different countries. So that's what you see, there is a globe with all different kind of flags in it, because each country still has its own regulations and, and power requirements and ERP standards as well. Then certified professionals, we need that um, as part of this community as well. And that will help actually the CWMP community and also the vendors uh, who are doing wireless uh, training. Um, that a government per vertical market, like the education market, the healthcare market, oil and gas, energy, transportation sector, who are all deploying Wi-Fi networks, that there need to be a standard in place. And currently, it is the wild, wild west. Or actually, on our side, it is the wild, wild east. <laughs> okay, so it's all a big mix. Um, now, I think everybody heard about Gen X, right? So that is uh, around uh, the World War area. Then we had Gen Y. That's where all the kids which goes on flip-flops do their work, if you, if you search this on Wikipedia. And I think this community will become the Gen Y, uh, sorry, W, <laughs> the Gen W, the wireless generation. Right? So I think it's our job, as we have this, this whole session organized by Keith, which is really good, people for people. How do we enable all those, those people wirelessly? Okay, that's the end of my presentation. Thanks for